strings akele start strings it to solve hard string data structure problems so given a string s and another given a string s and another string w uh, can you tell me how to check if w exists in s yeah uh, one algorithm which he says and which is very nice very good if you do not know kmp and if you want to implement something fast is uh, just hash like let uh, let s be my source string and w and uh, w be my the, be the string that i okay let w is if let me search s in w so if of course if uh, mod s is greater than w that is length of s is greater than w there is uh, the answer is surely that does not exist means s does not exist in w else uh, take numbers of that is take substrings of length mod s and then uh, shift it that is and find a hash use a hash function hash it into some numeric value check whether the hash compute h of s beforehand check whether this substring is equal to hash of s if yes then go for a loop and check whether it is actually this if it actually matches or if it is something different this works very well in practice because depending if you use a reasonably good hash function so we will now discuss a deterministic linear time algorithm for strings uh, uh, for string matching we uh morris pratt algorithm so KMP works on so given a source string, uh, given a source string S, you first preprocess the string and construct an array F. Now what F denotes is F of i would denote the longest proper pre proper prefix of i. Okay, I would I'll rather write the definition. F of i is equal to longest prefix of S, which is a suffix of s1 to i like if my s is a b k a then uh, at this point f a b k a x then at this point f would be one that is the longest proper prefix that is if it is a a a if it is a a it would be one and not two we are not looking at a prefix we are looking at a proper prefix so uh, if you can, you if you can, first uh, first step in KMP is to compute this fun compute this array f, and once you compute this array f, you can use it to uh, uh, string match any any other string w. Now the interesting part about KMP is that it's an online algorithm, so w can even be one character at a time. So uh, like that is you need you just need one character at a time, and with that itself you can check whether w matches that is you need not store w completely in your memory at any point of time an online algorithm is an algorithm in which you just take uh, you just you, you are just given one query and you must output the result at that time itself that is an offline algorithm is you know beforehand what all will, will be asked to you and you uh, what is it depending and you can probably ma manipulate the order in order of computation to get better results so one problem you can try is and hey I'll, I'll go into the details of KMP now this is a very basic implementation of KMP and this is on spot that is any implementation of KMP would work but again the string to match is around 1e7 characters and you might not probably be able to store it that is you can take it online as char c and still do it so uh, I'll first discuss computing f for a given string s so uh, let's say compute prefix function f function and I, I'm given a string s so uh, please note just for sake of clarity that is just to avoid the uh, plus ones and minus ones I am assuming that my string is one one index it is just an exercise to convert it to a zero which convert the same, same code to a zero index string so I have an f uh, which is an array which is indexed from one uh, okay f f uh, which is indexed from uh, mod s plus one i have a counter p which denotes the uh, that is uh, my invariant is i'll always maintain a variable p which denotes what is the what is the longest prefix which is also a suffix until the string until string i'm considering so p is equal to zero initially that is for one character the answer is of course zero because it's a proper prefix and for position from for i from 2 to i less than now i have a new character p s bracket i coming in how should p be modified 
what this loop does is while p greater than zero is of course bound checking we i'll discuss that is this is not this is a trivial part p denotes as i said i'm sorry p denotes what is the longest prefix just before i has occurred now i have a new character s bracket i coming in so if that prefix is next character is s bracket i then uh, then that is valid so that is i can just increment p if the prefix is next character is not a not a not okay for example a b a b uh, okay uh, so if the prefix is next character is not equal to not equal to s of i then what then what does that mean i'll have to go to a prefix of uh, of f of p uh, that is how to explain this is for example let's say i i have a let's say this is my prefix and i let's say i have an x here and i have y z and i have i again get a b a b okay a b s okay now the answer for this would be 4 and if the next one is not equal to x it will check if it matches with ab that is that is it, it is also possible that the next character for example if it is an a then ab a the answer should be 3 that is you cannot set p to 0 once this condition doesn't hold that is you you'll have to check you'll say you'll have to set p is equal to f of p why so because the next character could be a in which case from here it should go here and not to the end of this thing so as in uh, this again you could probably just look at uh, you could probably just output the values so we have to have an idea of how this proceeds so once this loop exists once if the loop exists there could be two conditions one is p is equal to 0 or s of p is equal to s of i so uh, as of if so uh, all i'm doing is if it exited because of this condition i increment p that means i have found a prefix which is greater than the present prefix and i set f of f of i equal to p so this is kmp p processing the uh, can anyone tell me what the complexity of this uh, code is this this takes modest time and you can prove that this the number of times this whole total thing this total while loop executes is modest how to prove that is p is incremented only by one only by one in each step and so if p decreases by let's say k to incre increment again by k i'll need k steps so the number of if you if you look on an aggregate the total number of increments that is total number of decrements and increments would be approx means would be a, a multiple of s most probably 2s that is you can look into clrs for comment for details regarding the proof but the idea is that you cannot increase p by more than one so the maximum you can increase p is modest so and this can decrease it by more than one so each step would increase it by at most one so this while loop should not take at most modest steps in, in uh, on an aggregate so yeah uh, so this is compute prefix function assuming you have the prefix function now the next question is how would you compute uh, how would you check whether a, uh, uh, another pattern p has s in it so uh, i have a new pattern t so p okay string match string match s comma w so i first compute prefix s prefix of s now uh, i just assume that the number of characters for which it matches is zero and uh, zero now uh this is the pseudo code for string match i uh, that is you iterate over every character in w so you have w ith character coming now initially i said p is equal to 0 the longest prefix which matches so what p denotes is longest prefix of s which matches until for uh, w from i to that is w from 0 to i so now while p greater now i again try now i have a new character w i coming in i must now update p such that 0 to w i the w substring of w from 0 to w i matches how would i do that it's the, it's the same code in fact all you are doing is convert changing the s to w uh, so that is I, i'll just keep on going to the prefix and check whether the next prefix the next character after the prefix in s is equal to w if it is equal i break and uh, and then i increment p that is in case it is equal i increment p or i'll be breaking because p is equal 0 so 
Now, after incrementing, if p is equal to mod s, that is if if you that is if the longest prefix of s, which is until zero to w i, is equal to the size of s, then of course you found a match, and you can you know do whatever whatever the problem asks for. So uh, this is the implementation. The problem you can try, of course, to check your KMP implementation is NHA. You can also try P string, which is a problem which is based on prefix functions. That is, it is a little hard, but I think it will really test your KMP knowledge. So uh, now uh, Ajay Samani will take on string data structures. So essentially, uh in a lot of programming contests, you would have seen some problems which are based on strings and you can come up with a very easy solution which is very easy to code but it's too slow and you have no idea how to proceed. Like, let's say we take a problem, I give you a string, so I have given a string as, I want to find out the longest palindrome inside this string s longest palindromic substring so a substring is a continuous subsequence so if I have a string let's say if I have a start index and an end index if I take the string just between these indexes that would be a substring of this string so a string of length n will have n square substrings, right? It is taken by a pair of start and end index. Now out of these n square substrings, what I am trying to look for is, I want to find out the substring which is a palindrome and has the maximum possible length. So, One very easy way to check this, to solve this is, I will take all possible n square substrings, I will see if it's a palindrome or not, and I will report whatever maximum length I found, which was a palindrome. Very simple solution. So this takes n cube time, right? Because n square substrings I have, each substring take order n time to check whether it's a palindrome or not. Now let's try to optimize this. So what if I, so you should see that every palindrome substring is characterized by the middle index, right? So if, if let's say this was, if the string was ABA, ABA, this whole thing is a palindrome, but it's centered at this point, right? So the center point of a palindrome it would lie between two indices if the palindrome is of even length but if you take a palindrome of odd length it will be centered at a particular index let's take a b a it will be centered at this is this clear so if we loop through the center index so let's take this as the center index i will have one pointer on this side one pointer on this side I keep going forward on both sides until the characters keep matching. So I see an A here and A here. I will increment this, increment this. I see B's that match. Let's say this was D. So then I saw here I have an A and I have a D here. So I cannot proceed further. So if my palindrome was centered at this index, the length of that palindrome would be 4, 2 on either side. Is that clear? So since the number of these points are just n, that is 2n, n on the n points which are centered on each end, n minus 1 which are centered between the points, right? So I take any center point, I will keep going forward in both directions until the characters match or either the string finishes. So if I have another A here and let's say a D later. So this ABA will match with this ABA. 
आई कैन गो फॉरवर्ड इन दिस डायरेक्शन